Hello. I've been meaning to do this. I I did one recording and it just didn't. There was a bunch of um, the window was vibrating and so it was causing noise. And I'm hoping this one's okay because it's really warm here in California and I don't want to have to roll my windows up. But I love recording these while I'm driving because my mind's just flowing. You know how you're always thinking of something when you're driving. So, but I wanted to let everyone know. Um, that my twin confirmed some things for me regarding spiritual journey, being on a spiritual journey, um, and psychic abilities and gifts coming on board. Um, as far as, um, talking about um, just having a knowing and being able to speak to past over loved ones. I mean, that's mediumship and just that um, for the past two years, you know, she's been on a merry-go-round and, and once off and we all know that that's the twin flame journey, you know, because we met two years ago. So... Um, so I wanted to let you know that, and it was such a huge confirmation to me. Oh, and the weird dreams, and even a dream about Atlantis. And, um, yeah, and someone else even mentioned Atlantis, too. So, um, underwater dream, but not in the water, and it was just like, oh my God. So, it was just complete, absolute confirmation that... The masculine are waking up to their divinity, their spirituality, they to their gifts, that they have been on a spiritual journey. This whole two years, I would have never guessed, ever, by looking in the 3D. Not, not that there, I didn't see things progressing, but as far as on the spiritual realm... And as far as um, waking up to any of that, I didn't notice that at all in the 3D. Not at all. And so this was like, whoa, when I heard it, of course. So I just wanted to give that wonderful encouragement to everyone that it is happening. Like these two years, I would have not guessed these things because I couldn't see it. But I got the confirmation, you know, and I had been asking the universe to throw me a bone. I need something. I need something because I absolutely had nothing to go on. And that's kind of how it is um, for some of the rod and staffs because you just are in complete, complete, absolute separation. Um, Because you know that's the best way for it to happen. And because you are rod and staff, you are um, very polarized. You know what I mean? You're just, you're, um, there's something there that you're so polarized. And it's like um, Lindy Cowling was explaining, and I loved her explanation about magnets. When magnets are flipped towards each other, okay, they are, they click together, they're magnetically drawn together, if you was to flip them on the other side, it's like you couldn't get them together if you tried, there's that, that, that opposite polarization where they are completely going in the opposite directions, and that's, that explains a little bit more of that, So, anyway, I was in complete, absolute dark. And I had been asking, and I had been saying, you know, know, because she she comes to me in dreams all the time, and I'm having all these dreams, and and I just wanted to know, you know, I've been saying that before, I would love to know if she's having dreams too. If I'm in her dreams, or if she's just even having dreams that are leading her to her true essence... You know, is she hearing things? Is she seeing things? 
are her psychic abilities coming on board? Is she waking up spiritually? And so I manifested this confirmation, basically, and it was wonderful. So I wanted to offer you some encouragement. Whatever you're seeing in the 3D is an illusion. And also I wanted to talk a little bit about perception and how you absolutely have to change your perception. After getting that confirmation, I was like, oh my God, yes, perfect. So many steps in the right direction. And so I was really um, knowing that there was going to be union quickly. Like it's, it's close. It's really close, guys. So I was saying to myself, what else is there that I need to do? You know, because it's not, it hasn't happened, you know, and I didn't even... You know, I I reached out and didn't get anything. I was ignored as usual, which is par for the course and totally expected. We already know this. Um, But I thought, what is it? You know, there's still, there's still something that needs to be cleared. There's still something because like Lindy Cowley was talking about the magnets, until everything is cleared out of that field, you cannot flip the magnets around to draw yourself back together because you will repel each other and rightly so she said it's like you know you come together you know and with all of this clearing that we've done we would be even more so magnetically drawn to each other however if there was something in the field it would it would be so disruptive and so for our sakes and she said, and for our family's sakes, and it was really funny, you know, because it's like nuclear, <laughs> whatever, you know, that there still has to be something clear. So I was just asking, you know, and then I was given the message to, since it's, you know, Mercury retrograde, to review. And so I was led to review our, some of our um, emails. And I had to really hunt and peck for, for the one email that she gave me where, um, was totally pushing me away because I had deleted it and I had not processed through that. So they led me about, oh, four or five days ago. And that's how long I've been meaning to make this video, um, to process through that. Because I shut it out. It was like, delete, block. You know, I've already said that. Like, I, you know, I was like, okay. And I deleted everything. I can't find any emails. I can find my emails, but there, I can't find any of hers. And we had, oh my God, it said 200. It was so funny because it was 221, I think. Um, emails back and forth, but there, all of those weren't there because I totally, like, I was like, okay, you know, you're trying to hurt me. That was uncalled for, you know, deuces and everything was gone. But I had screenshotted that last conversation. I don't have everything else, but I did that last conversation because I sent it to a friend like, what the F? Um... So anyway, in my reviewing of that, okay, because I perceived she was just being cruel and lying to me, that she didn't know anything. She was confused, and I completely caught her off guard, and because every sign was there, every synchronicity was there, everything was there. I seen, I seen, and I know I'm not crazy. We've established this already. Karen's not crazy. (laughs) And neither are you guys. Okay? We know. Alright? So I seen her soul. And her soul opened up to me. And her soul recognized me. But the misperception came in when I assumed that she was physically in the third dimension aware of this connection no her soul was giving me messages just like it gave me those confirmation messages that I got a few days ago her soul is talking to me the other half of my soul is communicating with me 
my masculine energy is communicating with me. But my twin's physical body and mind is not conscious of that. So they are completely clueless. And you will convince yourself because you see it. And you're here and you're aware and so you know it. And you convince yourself that there's no way that they don't know. That they're not getting it. And they're just being cruel to be cruel. And they're just pushing me away to push me away. They're pushing you away because it's in your contract. Because you have to separate. Just like the magnet thing again. Using that analogy. Of you have to. The pull. The magnetic polarization is completely there. And you're drawn to each other. But it can be catastrophic. It can be harmful. And we've seen the damage that it can do. Okay? So, your soul knows no. So, you come together, you you, you get in that, you know, that love phase, which it's totally there, but it is, you know, and they might be conscious of some of the connections or some of the things, you know, they might say, oh, yeah, you know, she's a cool cat but as far as them knowing anything deeper or anything more they just don't so I wanted to say that that say that and that is true now if you have an awake twin you know he's awake or she's awake and they are completely 100% know about the twin flame journey and know that you're a twin I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ones that are complete separation and their twin has not acknowledged anything spiritual, anything twin flame, anything soulmate at all. Now, my twin is now consciously aware of spirituality and is being shown that. And is being shown her gifts. Is she consciously aware of me? Not yet. No. Because if if she is spiritually awake and knows me and knows who I am and about the connection, there's not going to be any wild horses that's going to be able to keep us away. Once they remember and fully come on board and are aware of who you are, it's... It's go time. So that's the difference. And, um, you know, I could be preaching to the choir and everybody may already know this, but I really had to look at that conversation and realize that my perception of it, that she was lying, was completely not true. She really was confused. Now, she did push me away harshly, but because of my tenacious nature, Okay, and the sign that I am being a Sagittarius and because we set it up before we came here I feel like she really had to push me away because I was just so in this I mean just oh my god you guys just everything that happened during our, our interactions um, I would have never believed that she didn't get it But, um, and so then, of course, I was shown that I wanted to believe that it was a lie. And that she was lying and she couldn't face it. It was easier for me to believe that than the full-on rejection. Because I wasn't ready to face that full-on rejection. And it would have crushed me back then. And that is why at this time, I truly am healing from it. And really facing that underlining fear of rejection. And the fear of her rejecting me again. Because fear came up as well. All this fear came up. Oh, that's it. I'm done. 
I'm out. Because I was reading it and thinking she's going to do it again. Which I had to process through that. I had to process through that fear and the doubt again that that she's going to fully accept me unconditionally and love me unconditionally. So I had to process through that doubt. I had to process through the rejection because when I reread those words from an aware state that I'm in now and, and consciously aware and fully in my knowing that that's my twin, those words cut like a knife. And so I had to process that pain and that rejection because I could now then I couldn't and that's why I was pushed away in the anger oh my god because I just read it was like really oh really oh uh uh-huh yeah you know it was one of those you know and then so I had to process through that Knowing that I'm energetically pushing her away just by, by doing that. But it's, you know, it's necessary for right now. It's just, it's just necessary because I have to, I have to process through this. So I found something after all this time, something deep. And what was it really? What is my fear of intimacy and the fear of rejection is because I was not completely in my knowing that... My twin, of course, will unconditionally love me. It's about the unconditional love. So everything that I was seeing in the 3D absolutely was not going to be how it was. You know, I've heard it said before that when your twin comes back to you, they're going to be totally changed. They're going to be in their divinity. They're going to be in their sovereignty. They're going to know who you are. They're going to remember that they've loved you for lifetimes, just like we have. And they're going to unconditionally love you. There's nothing about that. There is no nothing. There is no flaw. There is no anything that's going to keep them away from you. So I had to come into that knowing 100%. Have I worked completely through it? Do I know that 100%? I do know that in my heart. But if I, if I get into my headspace and look at things in the 3D and some of the old masculine behaviors that still play out with her, I could go there really easily. And so I just drop into my heart and know because that's where the love is and that's where our union is. And that's the truth of it. But I had to process through that because when it's go time, when it's time to go, when it knocks on my door, I have to be able to confidently and boldly step into it because union is that close. So this had to be cleared. At the same time, while I'm clearing my fear of intimacy and fear of rejection, she's also clearing fears. And... Um, we're still clearing through. And at the same time of that, of me judging myself harshly with body image, she's also mirroring that. And she judges herself. You know, and I still see that in the 3D. So we're still clearing through that. And her being able to accept herself and me being able to accept myself without judging our bodies and our appearance so critically, that will enable us to look at each other without judgment and her being able to not judge me on appearance or um, yeah peer, just looking at me uh, with love and not, not through the old masculine eye so that's those are those last bits of things that I know that are being cleared I have full confidence because I am motivated um There was something else that I wanted to say about that. And I lost it, dang it, because I kept talking. Um, (sighs) 
about going back and looking and seeing if there's anything. Um, boldly and confidently stepping into it. I said that. Um, yeah. Because it's here. Um, but there's, there was still that. There was still that fear of rejection. It was still there. And so I was led to go back and review. And that fear of rejection, I got hit with the pain of it. And I processed through it. And so that fear of rejection is dissipating. Um, the fear and doubt is totally gone. Um, the anger is a little there. I'm a little miffed. You know, I'm just miffed in general. And I think it's the energies. So I'm processing through some of that anger. Um, and the fear of rejection, when I drop into my heart, it's gone. So I just have to keep affirming that and boldly pushing forward. Um, but yeah, and it's in, so it was about my perception completely of what I thought was being seen or not seen. And it was about, um, yeah, me perceiving what was being done to me, you know, the interaction wasn't. It wasn't, um, it wasn't lying. There was clear confusion there. Um, but I do feel that there was a hint of knowing. And it might have been just been her soul because she, she pushed me away, dude. And of course, I have went to the extreme with it as well. And it's still not coming to me, the other point that I wanted to make. But anyway, so I hope that this really sheds light and hope and gives you some understanding regarding what your twin knows and what they don't know and not to take it personally if anything's going on. You really cannot because they're just clueless and they're being veiled. And they just don't know. Okay. When they fully come to and they realize who you are, then it's all bets are off. But until then, you cannot hold anything that they're doing against them. That unforgiveness is what's going to put a wedge between you. And there's a lot of unforgiveness that's going on with the twins. And that's one thing that I had to do too was... Oh, I know what it is. Okay, so yeah. So then when she did that, I was like, okay, you know, I went there, dude. I was like, I'm deleting everything, deleting all pictures. Told her to delete all my pictures. Told her she sufficiently slammed the door in my face. And peace out. And so I was beating myself up about me pushing her completely away. And I went back and read those words that registered that cut like a knife. And so it kind of, it put me, I felt like it put me on a leveling, you know, because I was beating myself up about what I did. I thought I did something to ruin it. And really it was a level playing field. We mirrored each other in that moment of pushing each other away. We both slammed the door in each other's face. We mirrored each other in that experience and I was blaming myself. So I had to forgive myself and then turn around and forgive her for doing that and be like water under the bridge because it doesn't matter. And it doesn't. It totally doesn't. Whatever you have done during this journey, words, whatever, and whatever they have done has got to be water under the bridge. It's part of the journey and it gets you to the final destination. Ah, I'm glad I remembered that. Okay, so that was the other point that I wanted to make. Anyway, I hope that this finds you all well and that you understand what I'm saying. I hope that you find encouragement and inspiration from the confirmation that I received. Know that they have been on a journey this entire time and what you're perceiving and the illusion that is happening in the 3D is not what is real. They are working. They are working just as much as we are. And I'm so proud of her. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing leaps and bounds and I am seeing wonderful things 
And all of that was confirmation. And I am so proud, so proud. They really are doing the work. Cut them some slack and just continue to love them. Do not walk away from your twin. Continue to love them completely until you come into union. Forgive them. Release it all. If there's anything, anything buried, dig it up and flush it out. We're manifesting this, kids. And I need everybody on board. Every, the more people that come into union, it helps the others come into union. It's a process. It's a journey for all of us. And we've got to really start moving past these things and manifest this. This is the year. So get on it. Be inspired. If you need me, you know how to find me. I love you very much. Namaste.